Welcome to Northwest Brew Talk. I'm Mike Rizzo. And I'm Michelle Rizzo. And this is episode number eight. On today's show, we'll have an interview with Eric Lint from Skagit River Brewery, Brew News and Views. And before we start the show, I'd like to apologize for missing last week's show. We were in the middle of editing the show when our hard drive crashed. After the crash, we lost uh, the show and a bunch of interviews. And by the time we got everything uh, up and running again, we figured we might as well just skip last week's show. So, on with this week's beer. We're going to start the show with Storm Surge Winter Ale by Diamond Knot Brewing. This beer has 5.5% ABV. So Diamond Knot's original brewery and ale house is in this building that's been a that's had a pub in it for the last 20 years. And before the building became a pub, it was this bus garage that was used by a local transit company. And the main roll-up door can still be seen inside the front door. The original thick, sturdy wooden beams and open plank ceiling give the building a wharf-like atmosphere that fits perfectly with their nautical feel and the waterfront where they're located. It's um, got a nice, nice smell to it. It's a darker color too. In 2013, Diamond Knot doubled its space at the same waterfront location. The expansion includes family-friendly dining, a coffee and ice cream bar, yum, as well as full breakfast menu and full bar. All right. It's a good winter ale. Unfortunately, uh, winter's just about over here in the Northwest, and uh, we're on to um, spring. Yep, this Storm Surge winter ale is only available October through February, so you must have gotten that last batch there. Diamond Knot describes their Storm Surge Ale as having a complex maltiness from German Carabed, Caramel, Munich, and Carapils malts. Layered happiness from loads of Chinook, Cascade, Simcoe, and Columbus hops. Stained black with midnight wheat for just a hint of roasty tastiness. They claim it's guaranteed to chase away those winter blues. Mm. I could see that. It's just got a little, little bite to it, so... I'm sure on a cold winter night, this would probably be delicious. We haven't had many of those. <laughs> well, we've had some cold nights, but we definitely had, haven't had any snow in our area. Now, on to our brew news and views. The Vancouver Brew Fest is right around the corner, literally, Friday, March 20th, and Saturday, March 21st. Both days are 12 to 10 p.m. The event supports three charities, Disabled American Veterans, Second Chance Companions, and Northwest Battle Buddies. There will be 32 breweries, five distilleries, one cider house, and a whiskey bar. Tickets are $30 or $20, and it gives you entrance on both days. Sounds like a great event, so if you're in the area, definitely get your tickets online as you'll save money and get a lot more tokens with the $30 all-star ticket. Nice. Visit VancouverBrewFest.com for more details and to order your tickets. Another event coming up quickly is the Cask Beer Festival on Saturday, March 28th. The event features 40 Washington breweries, and all the beers are conditioned naturally in casks without artificially adding CO2 into the cask. All beer will be poured by gravity or a beer engine. The festival, held at Seattle Center Exhibition Hall, has two sessions. <laughs> and the first one is already sold out. Ooh, nice. <laughs> the second session from 6 to 10 p.m. still has some openings, so you'd better hurry. For more information, visit WashingtonBrewersGuild.org. All right. Well, a couple weeks ago, <clears throat> we were talking... Uh, or word got out that Full Sail Brewing of Hood River, Oregon, was entertaining uh, a buyout offer. Right before we went to air last week, which uh, we lost, um, it turned out that on uh, March 9th, last Monday, the employee-owned company accepted the offer from Encore Consumer Capital, a San Francisco-based investment firm known for holding on to companies longer before selling them. So, they will be sold again. But when that is, we'll be up to the new owners after they try to make the company even more profitable and lucrative to an even bigger fish, i.e. an Anheuser-Busch or a Miller Coors. 
As the industry continues to grow, we are going to see more and more of these deals across the country. With uh, over 3,000 be- breweries, it's, it's bound to happen. Mm-hmm. Full Sail has been around since 1987 and was sold to the employees in 1999. Founder Irene Fermat and executive brewmaster Jamie Emerson built what appears to be a great brewery and now will probably be able to relax after a little uh, time. We wish them luck. On March 5th, Craft Brew Alliance released their 2014 year-end results. Red Hook Ale Brewery of Woodenville, as well as Widmer Brothers in Oregon and Hawaii's Kona Brewing are all part of the alliance, of which Anheuser-Busch owns 32.2% of, exceeded $200 million in sales for the first time. Red Hook shipments increased 3% over 2013. Contract brewing and related sales increased 33%. For 2015, they're predicting 6-8% to growth, as well as spending 17 to $21 million in capital expenditures. Red Hook recently partnered with Carl's Jr. and Hardee's to launch the Red Hook ESB Beer Battered Fish Sandwich Nationwide. Additionally, Red Hook will be celebrating their 30th anniversary in 2015. Craft Brewer Lines is also looking for, quote, high performers, unquote. So expect some additional brewery sales in 2015. Nice. Now, Foggy Nuggin Brewing in Bothell is celebrating their fifth anniversary this month, and they've had plenty of events going on to celebrate. Last Friday, March 13th, they hosted a vertical tasting of their anniversary L from 2011 through 2015. This Friday, March 20th, they will host a vertical tasting of five versions of this year's anniversary L, including dry hopped and several different oak aged. And finally, the big party will be on Saturday, March 21st from noon to five. They will release their 2015 anniversary L and pour rare bill beers all day. We met with uh, owner brewmaster Jim Jameson last week. Very nice guy, crazy little place. We'll tell you about it when we uh, have our interview with him in a few weeks. Check out FoggyNogginBrewing.com for the full lineup of events coming this weekend. Welcome back to Northwest Brew Talk. If you have not yet subscribed to our podcast, why not do it now? It's free, available on iTunes, Podbean, Stitcher, and other sites. And if you like us, you can always review us and rate us, and that's always going to be appreciated. Mm-hmm. But even more important, tell all of your friends about Northwest Brew Talk via social media or whatever way you want. Definitely, we appreciate that. Now, let's talk to Eric Lint from Skagit River Brewery. How are you doing today? Good, how are you? Excellent. Good. So, uh, why don't you start out uh, telling us, so when did the brewery open? Well, the brewery opened uh, almost 20 years ago. Um, uh, to the month, actually, mm-hmm. in 1995, um, and Charlie Sullivan and his family um, started the started the business in Mount Vernon. They were looking for a uh, a location that had great economics and potential and in, uh, in the area. Um, and that they, their first intentions were to um, you know just do a microbrewery, uh, no restaurant mm-hmm. or anything like that. Um, things have kind of um, switched over the years for sure so um, now it's more restaurant and pub than than the microbrewery um, in terms of sales oh, okay so so the restaurant's a, a bigger portion of it it is yeah yeah definitely. yeah it's our bread and butter oh sure. really yeah oh yeah and the beers like a add-on yeah <laughs> yeah it is you know I, th- I think that the thought would uh, back in the day you know it would be you know the next red hook or mm-hmm. you know uh, okay. you know something more substantial on the wholesale market mm-hmm. and um, it just didn't happen, okay. uh, and so the, the company just kind of went in a different direction. The owner, the founder, went, uh, the original uh, family just went into, into a different direction. Uh, okay. They just didn't want to, uh, they didn't want to have a restaurant and um, wasn't going in the, in the right way that they wanted to see happen, so they got out of it. So so when did you come on? I came on in 2009. Um, I was going to just take over the, the actual the restaurant side of the company, and uh, um, they, uh, Charlie Sullivan, uh, who's still a real good friend of mine, he uh, just shared that he wanted to be out completely, and so yeah. um, it kind of just landed in my lap. I uh, purchased uh, the ma- majority shares from his his family um, in 2010. Uh, and so I, I became chairman of the board and president. Um, so that's kind of uh, 
how I got involved. I was here previously from 97 to 2003 while I was going to Western oh, okay. uh, Washington University for uh, accounting. So, Did you, where did you work? Here. In, here. Yeah, I worked here. Doing, uh, doing what? I waited tables and oh, okay. I managed for them. I, okay. did, I did the accounting for them because I was in, in that field anyway. Um, and in doing that, I, I also went to, to, to school. So. Okay. so I worked here for quite a few years before. Yeah. That's how my, that was my involvement with sure. them before that. So. so now you said that they did they open a restaurant when they opened? No, it? no. So it was came. it was just a tasting room. Okay. Um, and then it, it was really slow in terms of um, full scale restaurant. I mean, they I think they had a tasting room for about a year, two years, and then. And then they started doing sandwiches and um, just limited service. People go up to the counter, mm -hmm. order, they bring, give them a, a tap or a okay. beer tap for a number, oh, okay. and they find them out here in, in, the, in the restaurant. <laughs> and um, really limited, I mean, the sandwiches and soup and things like sure. that. And then 1998, they had a huge remodel, mm -hmm. and um, we you know, uh, infused the wood-fired oven and uh, made the whole transition. And um, I helped with that a little bit. And, uh, I, I wasn't as involved at that time in terms of managing. I was really focusing on school, um, you know, but uh, I was here anyway. So, and, and it's been a, a dramatic, um, I mean, since that time, it's just a huge change in the, the, in the dynamics from what they, right. you know, uh, started at. So Yeah, the industry's changed a lot. Oh, too. definitely. It's really changed. Yeah. I'm sure the accounting background helps. It does, you know, and then people always find it kind of funny uh, uh, that someone with an accounting uh, degree or a finance uh, background would ever want to do a restaurant because it's restaurant, pub, brewery, right. uh, whatever you want. Because uh, it's, it's hard work, you know, it's mm -hmm. long hours, it's tedious, and you got to deal with uh, employees and customers, and mm -hmm. you know, but it's, it's fun. I, I, I enjoy it. I, I'm not the sit behind a desk kind of guy, so. right. and I, you know, I like to help out in the brewery and go to beer events. And I mean, it's why I'm in it. I love, I love beer. So mm -hmm. <laughs> that makes sense. Yep. Um, so what size uh, brewery system? Is we have a 25 barrel system okay. right now. Yeah, um, we have six uh, 20 barrel fermenters and uh, four 20 barrel uh, conditioners. Five, excuse me, five 20 barrel conditioners. So it's a, it's a fairly large system yeah. um, for what our output is. We, right. We've contracted a little bit with um, a couple different breweries. Oh yeah. Um, you know, just to mm -hmm. uh, you know make money or <clears throat> I'm just going to infuse some cash flow. We have the space and capacity to do it, so why not? Okay. So, so this is the original system. This isn't a, no. No. Uh, they they purchased this a few years after. The original system, which was a 15 barrel system. Oh, okay. Um, you know, um, but they were really intending on they the really yeah, brewery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they got the 15 barrel system. And they were you know brewing, you know, a couple times a day to, to get to the capacity to you know uh, transfer into a 20 barrel, 30 barrel fermenter, and uh, it just got labor intensive. So they decided to to go ahead and, and purchase the 25 barrel system. So yeah. Um, there you go. So how much uh, of the capacity do you utilize for your own operation? Here? Oh, um, we're probably about a little over 1,800 barrels a year. Okay. I, mean, we're, I mean, we're a small, mm -hmm. we're a small operation for sure. Right. Um, but, it's, I mean, it's a decent amount uh, when you're, you know, talking about most of, of the beer sales are going towards the, uh, through the pub. Right. Know, right. Are they all, is all your beer sold here on location? Or do you, yeah. you know, distribute anything? No, we distribute. I mean, oh, we, yeah, we, oh, do, okay. we do do both. Yeah. Okay. I mean, we, we're with Sound Beverage okay. um, up here or up in the Northern Air uh, uh, Territory and then uh, Odom distributing down in Seattle okay. uh, to the border of uh, Oregon. We're not in Oregon, really. Um, we have a little bit of presence in uh, eastern Washington, but, uh, you know, we're, we, we, and we, you know, we've been in Safeco. Had our Pilsner and Safeco, our Scholars IPAs, man, and uh, Safeco and Century League. So we, I mean, we've had some pretty decent exposure. Mm -hmm. um, it's just you know we, we kind of backed off on the bottling, so we'd our you know our beers really aren't 
too many stores right. in terms of bottles. Um, and we're, you know, we're obviously around um, different pubs and taverns. Um, okay. You know, Fred's and Snohomish always has us on. And, um, I mean, many places have, right. have our beer on tap. Right. But, um, so you're kind of sh trying to straddle the line yeah, to we're, still be a brewery? Yeah, but, so. yeah. I mean, we're on that. I mean, we'll always be a brewery, right. um, for sure, you know, um, and we'll, we'll, we're, we're definitely going to, you know, try to uh, continue the, the wholesale market, um, um, we'll see where that takes us, um, I think, we, you know, there's a little bit of work to be done, we probably need to hire a sales, mm. you know, just get a sales force out there and really do it if we're going to do it. Right, you know, right. So. so maybe something down the road? Done, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So what... Uh, do you guys have a signature beer? You know, um, we brew about 16 beers a year, um, 10 of which are on um, right now. Um, I would say our flagship for sure um, is the Scholar's IPA um, and the Skagit Brown Ale, which used to be referred to, or still is referred to, as the Steely Brown. Okay. Um, a lot of people still come in for that. That was one of our first beers produced. Okay. Um, I would say those two are, are you know, are, are red ships and right. some of the most popular. Um, some of the other popular ones that are, are real people really are, are uh, enjoying are, are this Gospel IPA, mm. which is a, a single malt uh, with Amarillo hops. Um, it's a really nice, it's a, a kind of a lighter style IPA, but it has a really nice hoppy punch on the end. Okay. A nice citrus. Um, the Pilsner is really nice, cold beer Pilsner. Um, for those who like a lighter mm -hmm. style beer, our farm to market, um, we collaborated with uh, um, the, I think it's called the PCC down in Seattle, the, okay. um, the co-ops co down there, um, and 25 cents per bottle was going towards uh, farm to preserve farm oh, and okay. things like that. Uh, but that's like an ESB. That's a nice one. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been popular as well. So that's cool. Yeah. So let's see. Uh, now your head brewer does is, are these are these old recipes are these recipes he's you know, come up with yeah some of them are old recipes that we maintain um, as much as we can with the you know um, just depending on the price of uh, raw ingredients or you know sometimes things change over you know 20 years mm -hmm. in terms of uh, raw materials right. but um we, I would, I would say we have a nice balance actually. Uh, Mike Armstrong, who's the head brewer, does a really nice job of, um, you know, maintaining our signatures and, and, and our, our older style beers that we've done for a long time, but also infusing um, something new all the time. Um, like you just brewed the Black Jack Lager. It's a black lager. It's really nice. Um, Gospel IPA is fairly new. Um, the Pilsner actually is fairly new. So we have a lot of new stuff mm -hmm. while still maintaining. Okay. Some of the old recipes, for sure. Now, do you try and uh, source your ingredients, at least state, you know, at least Washington State? Yeah. 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 Okay. Definitely. Is that, how about for the restaurant itself, too? As far as... Um, Food-wise? Yeah. I mean, we, um, in fact, I just had a, a meeting with a local um, purveyor um, okay. about, um, you know, keeping it local. And, um, it's hard, though, sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, when you... When you're in a, an industry that has small margins, like the restaurant business, you gotta. I mean, even though you want to keep it local, you want to keep it organic. You know, you, you fresh mm -hmm. every day. And but sometimes there's there's things that you know you do have to get from a conglomerate like Cisco Foods or right. FSA that mm -hmm. you know you, you have to because you can't afford not to. Right. Um, when you're you know as busy as we are. Right. Uh, for sure. But yeah, I mean that's definitely a direction that we want to maintain as um, local. Sure. Now, does the uh, restaurant, uh, is there any day busier than any other? Are the weekends busiest? Oh, yeah, definitely. Be, you know, weekends are um, by far just um, they're pretty crazy. Yeah. You know, people line out the door um, yeah. pretty much all day, yeah. um, especially yeah. on Saturday. It's Sunday not a bad thing. Right? No, it's a good thing. And <laughs> In <laughs> would, one way. I would never complain about <laughs> that. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so we're busy. I mean, yeah. uh, even during the week, we can... We can get pretty busy, especially yeah. you know with the the, the outside seating uh, coming mm -hmm. on board here in probably next few weeks. If it, you know if the weather maintains, yeah. of course, um, but we'll be getting the patio ready, and um, 
it's very popular, yeah. you know, for sure. And then, Mount, especially in the Mount Vernon area, there's no place really to go and enjoy a beer and food. And, watch uh, train go watch by. Watch train go by or yeah. whatever you, you desire <laughs> to do. <laughs> um, and then outside, so yeah. it's, uh, uh, people really do enjoy that. And it definitely helps our business, for sure, oh, having definitely. that seating. Yeah. Now, uh, you said you like to keep... Uh, involved in the in the beer community and stuff mm -hmm. have you do you attend any festivals yeah we do we do you know um hops uh hops for props i think oh, yeah. it is called up yeah. in bellingham uh we do the father's day one down at the edge i think that's that's water the mary moore park yeah, yeah. Marymore, yeah. Yep. um i mean and uh, i mean those are just the two that i off the top of my head i can mm -hmm. think of that i personally go to sure. um, if I can get out of here uh, right. out of the pub but, um, but Mike does a lot more than uh, oh, okay. than I do I mean uh, he's the one that really uh, goes and um, does the you know by to Seattle for instance they mm -hmm. have that um, I think they just infused the the craft beer section of that which is pretty fun and I've been I've been to that in the last couple of years so that's a really really fun time down there um so yeah, I mean we're we try to be involved as much as possible. Um, like I said, you know, for us being somewhat small, we sometimes are limited and can't go to every single one. Sure, sure. But um, we try to make it to as many of the ones that make sense for us to go to. Do you uh, have you in the past uh, entered any of the beers in uh, competition? Yeah, we went. We just sent our beers to um, GABF. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, I don't think we, don't think we placed, but it was still fun for Mike to go. I didn't get sure. to go, um, but I sent the head brewer down to, mm -hmm. to go, so which was he had a good time. Sure. Yeah. And I and I hear that that's yeah. it's good feedback too. It is regardless. good feedback. Yeah, it was yeah. great, great feedback notes for sure mm -hmm. on the, on the beers that we took down there. So oh, cool. Um, yeah. So, um, what would? Uh, what would be the goal? Would would the goal be for you to, or don't you know at this time? I mean, is is it to, to use utilize the entire system so you're yeah. pumping out yeah, all you your know, own beer? My actually, you know, yeah. I mean, the direction. That's probably what he would. The, the definitely the, the direction that I definitely would want to take the company is having the multiple locations no. of, of the pub. I think that the retail side is definitely where where we really celebrate. Um, we do, you know, two million dollars a year in this little tiny pub here, which is significant for Mount Vernon. I mean, uh, you know, we're we, it's decent business, mm -hmm. and um, we get so much feedback from customers that are coming from the south or from the north, east, west, whatever that are traveling and mm -hmm. would love to see another pub in their area, mm -hmm. you know, like Ballard area or right. something um, like that. And we definitely that's something on the on the. I would say the back burner at this point, but um, a, definitely a goal mm -hmm. um, to achieve um, for us. Um, I think, and that's probably the direction that we will go. I don't know that we'll go in the, the you know, um, the huge micro brewery, you know, um, direction. Mm -hmm. And um, we'll always make our own beer, but um, will we? maintain a huge presence in, in wholesale um, I don't know that at the moment we've you know, we got to see where that, sure. where that leads and where sure. that takes us so being around for so long definitely yeah. gives you a yeah. foot up on some of the yeah. other breweries yeah. now um, what's one of the biggest obstacles that uh, you've come across or that you, you have to deal with in, in this in the industry yeah. the, in the beer world yeah. either side I guess. either side yeah um, Other than people calling off, <laughs> <laughs> employees. <laughs> yeah, that's the funnest part. <laughs> you know, I don't. I mean, off the top of my head, I can't really think of any like just huge obstacles. Um, other than uh, you know, because I've never owned anything, uh, quote unquote, owned anything uh, before this. Mm -hmm. And um, I think the most challenging thing is just with a small business are taxed to death oh, yeah. um, taxes and just the, the 
liquor laws and the ATF, and it's difficult, you know, uh, sometimes when you want to make changes. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's been huge. Um, and uh, just from experience of trying to transition uh, the, the structure of the company from, you know, previous uh, ownership to, to my own, I mean, it was really, really complicated. Um, it was almost a nightmare. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, I mean, industry-wise, I don't. It is kind of what you make it. I mean, you can consider things obstacles, but I, you know, I, I look at it at a different angle, I guess. You know, um, if it's meant to be. It's meant to be. If it's not meant to be, it's not meant to be. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. I try to be positive about everything that I, you know, look at. Um, yeah, I, don't, I mean, I don't, I don't really have any other huge obstacles that I would call out, really, okay. uh, other than your normal trials of running a business, you know, employees and customer satisfaction and customer retention and mm -hmm. things like that. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, that's just the, that's what you sign up for. Right. In this business. Yeah, retention so, is a big thing. Oh, yeah. Once you yeah. get them in, you got to yeah, keep them you got to keep them coming back. Yeah. The loyalty is definitely mm -hmm. uh, a big one. And I feel like we've really established that um, with a lot of our, our regular customers. So, well, awesome. Well, Eric Lint of Skagit River, thank you very much for thank joining you. us. Thank you. Yeah, you bet. Thanks. Thank you. And thanks to Eric Lint for joining us today. Great interview with him and to hear about his uh, brewery. Now, we will be right back. After a new segment here, we're going to have a music break from the band Tiny Messengers from Seattle.
That was Built to Last by Tiny Messengers, and you can check them out more if you enjoyed what you heard at tinymessengers.com. Now, here at Northwest Brew Talk, we are on the hunt for the best pizza and beer in the area. Have any recommendations from our listeners? We have our own here. We came across a place called Zeke's. They have seven locations throughout Seattle and five on the east side. Zeke's has some great pizza. Very good. We got uh, one of the salami something or other things, <laughs> and uh, that was awesome with pepperoncinis and salami, Very good. And, uh, and it was a big pizza, a large pizza. Like uh, back east, it was like a large pizza. It wasn't like a Domino's or a, or a Little Caesars <laughs> large, which is like a small, tiny, personal size pizza. Just because you can eat the whole thing doesn't make it a personal size. Oh, okay. <laughs> and we uh, we actually went to the uh, to the location at Queen uh, Queen Anne, and that was uh, their newest location. And uh, they have I forgot how many taps they had there, at least uh, ten. But it was yeah. a nice place to do growler fills too. So check it out, Zeke's, if you're looking for some really good pizza. Now, I'm going to try another beer. This time, we have an India Pale Ale by Dick's Brewing Company. 6.2% ABV. So Dick's Brewing actually has a lot of backstory, so I'll try to just stick to the basics. Dick Young started Northwest Sausage and Deli in October of 83. Soon after opening the deli, he decided he wanted a couple tables and chairs in there and started selling some sandwiches at the deli. But Dick was a lot like you, Mike. What? He couldn't sit still, so he started brewing at home. And his brews were so well-liked that he decided he wanted to make a business of his hobby. So they made a brewery in the same location as the deli and began brewing at just three beers. But it grew very quickly. From 94 to 2009, they went from three beer recipes to 20 styles. Wow. This, uh, this beer, golden, huge head on it. And the foam, the the foam is like super thick. It's crazy thick in there. So in 2008, they decided to move to Galvin Road, where they're currently located, and have become a tourist stop as well as a local hangout. And the tasting room there has won best place for a pint for four years in a row. Wow, that's great. This beer is very good, too. It's got um, all of the characteristics of an IPA. Why don't you tell us what's in this one? The Dix says that their Northwest IPA is balanced nicely with the use of crystal and victory malt. They finish this fine IPA with a heavy dose of dry hopping to lock in all the intense flavors that you're talking about now and aromas. They believe the IPA is sure to satisfy the hop heads of the Northwest. I can see why. It's definitely got a little bitter aftertaste, but it's, it's good. I like it. And that brings us to the end of this episode of Northwest Brew Talk. Make sure you tune in next week when we chat with Odd Otter Brewing. Oh, yes, Odd Otter. Good time. This show is produced by me and edited by me with engineering help from Michelle Rizzo. If you want to contact us, we are on Twitter and Facebook at NWBrewTalk, or you can email us at NWBrewTalk at gmail.com, or give us a call at 541-595-TALK. That's 541-595-8255. And if you leave us a message, we may play it on the air. Until next time, I'm Mike Rizzo. And I'm Michelle Rizzo. Stay hopping, my friends.